Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello and welcome to Inkdependence.com. I am Mike and this is Sailor's Shikiori Yonaga. Let me get this closer to the camera here. This is a sample from Anderson Pens. Thank you very much to uh, Anderson Pens for sending this out for review. I've got a bunch of these Shikiori inks, which is a sort of, I don't know, a subline, I guess. It's different from the gentle inks, I think, uh, and a bit more expensive. These come in 20 mil bottles at 15 bucks a piece, so uh, fairly expensive, really, but this one, at least, I haven't tried the others. I've only tried this one, but man, I really like this one. So let's take a look at this guy. Here it is on the page. And I think that this is uh, a pretty remarkable dark blue, really. Uh, I've only actually had it in one pen because I pretty well filled this pen with it. Uh, and uh, I'm kind of, I've got like a drop left in the sample. Eh, I don't know, maybe I've got, I don't know, about half a mil left in the sample vial. So I'm almost out because I just keep using it in this Twisby Eco T. This Eco T is a really nice pen, way better than it should be for uh, 28 bucks, whatever these suckers go for. I definitely say grab one of these. Uh, and this medium nib has done so well with Shikiori Yanaga that I'm kind of reticent to put anything else in here. Although I'm gonna have to because when this runs out and I've only got yeah, about that much left, uh, I'm gonna have to. So anyway, this is a nice dark blue. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, not a ton of sheen or anything like that. And that sheen comes off a little bit green, as you'll see in some of the um, the other uh, like cards and stuff that will show it on papers and whatnot. On Rhodia, of course, it behaves perfectly. On the 20 pound uh, office paper, there's a little bit of feather and a little bit of bleed, not much. Go ahead and take a look at that now. Uh, it's this one right here. If we get closer, there we go. You can see just like the hints of a few feathers there, but nothing too bad. My focus does not want to go that close. There we go. That's better. Um, and then there's a little bit of bleed on the back. You uh, more than I got from uh, what is this one? This is Kyanodos. Uh, so more than that, which is a little disappointing for Sailor Ink, honestly, I expected better. Uh, most Sailor Inks don't really have any problem with bleeding or feathering or whatever, but this one's got a little bit of that on the 20 pound paper. Of course, anything better than that, you'll be fine. So, uh, if you just want to write on good paper, man, get some of this Shikiori Yonaga because it looks beautiful and it's got a good feel on the nib. Let me get this a little closer. Too close, Mike. There we go. Flew too close to the sun. Uh, but it's a really beautiful ink and it feels great uh, on the nib. Uh, like I said, a little bit of green sheen, um, maybe a little bit on the wet side actually, which is not super normal for sailors Those generally tend to be pretty medium, maybe even a little bit on the dry side occasionally. Uh, this one though, I think runs a little bit medium wet. Um, and as I say here, I really like this guy too. It, this is just a great ink and I can't stop talking good about it except for a little bit of uh, feather and bleed that it does on this 20 pound paper, which is admittedly a little bit disappointing. Uh, and also the price is kind of high. At 15 bucks for 20 mils, I had heard rumors that all Sailor inks, the whole gentle line, everything was gonna go to that bottle, uh, which I'll throw an image up uh, of here. Uh, they're all going to go to this bottle, but I haven't seen that happen, and so that's good. Um, I have heard that uh, there's some pushback on the American distributor to um, uh, to not go to that uh, small bottle and inflated price, which would be good because while the current Sailor bottles are terrible, uh, they at least hold more than 20 uh, um, 20 mils. <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, there you go. That's the that's the downside is the cost and the uh, uh, the 20 pound performance is not great, but if you're writing letters or you're writing on your own paper, you don't really have to worry about that office paper thing. I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, you could grade with this. It's actually not that egregious on this 20 pound. It looks fine, uh, but it's not the best performing blue you can get. Uh, in fact, actually this, uh, this Monteverde Sapphire, which I actually really like, and Monteverde almost never feathers or spreads for me either. It had a little bit of an issue there too. So I don't know, maybe this paper is just extra cheesy. That's entirely possible. All right, let's look at it on a couple of other papers before we uh, uh, do anything else. Here is a uh, Ink Journal Tomoe River edition, which I use a lot. And there is the Shikiori Yonaga right there. And you can see a little bit of sheen from it. Not a ton though, and I've got some fairly bright light on the subject, but not a ton of sheen here. Uh, there it is. 
uh, just a little bit. It actually looks a little bit purpley in this light, which is kind of weird because it looks green in others. So uh, there you go. There it is on that. And of course, on Tomoe River, it's not going to bleed through or whatever. It, almost nothing does. Uh, and then this is, and you might not be able to get the, your hands on these for very much longer since uh, Matt, the pen habit, Armstrong, quit doing it. But uh, these in uh, inky fingers, currently inked notebooks, are great. This is a wheat straw paper. And where did I put that? There it is. There it is. And actually there I touched it before it was dry. And so you can see like the undertones, they're kind of a medium blue while the top is just like this. It's not a blue black. It's just a super dark navy, I think. And here a little bit of a uh, little bit of sheen, you get a little bit of purpley green stuff here on the thick part. Uh, not too much in the normal writing. So if you're a person that doesn't like sheen very much, this is a fairly saturated blue with very little sheen in normal usage. Um, let's uh, do our water test and then uh, look at chromatography and then look at a bunch of different kinds of, uh, of blues and such that might be close at the end. Okay, let's take a little bit of water to this stuff using my handy dandy syringe. Drag some across the words. You get a bunch here. There. All right. Uh, you can definitely see some of the blue swirling. It's not doing too bad, but it's definitely not perfect. This isn't going to be particularly water resistant, although I bet there's going to be some stuff left. I guess we'll just have to see. All right, let's go ahead and mop this up. Find a non-inky corner of this here paper towel. Nope, found a little bit of something there. Should have just gotten a fresh one. Bad, Mike. Bad. All right. Good enough. Yeah, so a bunch of it does move, but you still can totally read it. Uh, the dots are still there. A little bit of orange or something came off there. Uh, that is not natural. Uh, but you can still totally read this, so that's pretty good. Uh, it is just going to spread around. It might make a bit of a mess, but it's not too bad. Okay, so a little bit of water resistance. Not, not bad at all. All righty. Let's look at uh, the chromatography. Here is what you end up with which is, I think, a really pretty chromatography, a very interesting ink with all kinds of components going on here. You've got sort of a, a light blue down here, which uh, it looks like it actually stuck around better on the Rhodia, uh, if you compare the water resistancy stuff. It looks like it, better, it stuck around better here, but you do have this like sort of uh, light area. You get in this beautiful sort of rich purple. Look at that. And you got some teal and then some like I don't know, very, very dark bits at the top that might be black, but it's hard to say. So yeah, pretty complicated ink, actually, this Shikiori Yonaga. Uh, so there we go. All right, now let's look at a ton of color comparisons because I love blue ink, and I have a bunch of them. So here is uh, Shikiori Yonaga on a uh, Colodex card, which uh, if you haven't seen these from Well Appointed Desk, definitely check that out. And you can see that sort of... Uh, lime green or fluorescent yellow sheen on there that's pretty dope who doesn't like a little bit of neat sheen but not a ton you can definitely tell it's not overpowering the blue and then this is the color dex card and uh, you can see the green actually this spread out more I, I, it might just be that i uh, i had more ink on this one than this one and i spread it out more but you get a different texture so if you use different uh, different nibs you might get a lighter color than i did and you can see there's um, definitely that sort of uh, green sheen here at the edges and the ends where it was just a lot of ink pooling. There you go. So that's the uh, Shikiori Naga. Let's go ahead and stick another couple of inks next to it. Here is a, a pure blue, just straight up blue blue in Papier Plume's Calais Real. And then this is another dark blue from KWZ's Chicago Blue. Uh, it's a different, this is a little bit brighter, I think, than Shikiori Yonaga. This is a very sort of sedate blue. I don't know why I like it, honestly, because I usually like stuff that's more like this. This is a great blue, uh, but man, this one is so good too. Uh, then here we have another very dark blue in Monteverde's Ocean Noir, which also has a little bit of sheen to it. Not a ton, but just a little bit. Uh, Ocean Noir there. And uh, here's, uh, let's put it next to Noodler's Ottoman Azure, which I haven't used in quite a while, but it's got the same kind of character. Uh, I actually made this, or got this, uh, this ink in 2012, so I've had this ink for a while, but I haven't used it in a bit. 
Uh, it's what happens when you keep switching inks and you're an ink reviewer. You don't really get to go back to old ones. But I remember really liking Autumn and Azure. Uh, but this uh, this Yonaga looks real nice still too. But if you want a slightly less expensive version, this Ocean Noir actually looks like it's pretty darn close. Although I haven't had a chance to use Ocean Noir yet. I gotta I gotta break into that Noir box. Uh, here is another sailor. This is Kobe number seven. A lot of people like these Kobe inks. I think they're a little bit expensive, although they're probably not that much worse than uh, Shikiyo or Yonaga if you get the same sides. Uh, let's see what else have I got. Ah, here's another one from the Shikiori line. This is Shimoyo, uh, which is uh, more of a blue black. You can definitely tell the difference between the blue black and the dark blue here. Uh, otherwise, this might look like sort of a blue black if you get it in the right lights, but. This one is definitely the blue black, and I think Kobe number seven is as well. All right. Um, what else we got here? We got some. Here is a cult pens. I believe this is a diamine uh, made ink, deep dark blue. I really like those. So if you haven't seen any of those from cult pens, you have to go to cult pens, but they have deep dark everything, including like a deep dark orange and brown and all kinds of cool stuff. And then here is Robert Oster's Blue Knight. Uh, if this was Jihuan, it would be uh, Blue Nui but uh blue knight which is a kind of a nice ink but i haven't had a chance to use it it looks kind of close although it doesn't look like it has the saturation sort of the soft tones of the uh, shikiori yonaga it's a bit hard to tell hard to tell uh just a couple more we're almost done um here is uh mont blanc's uh, mont blanc uh jfk which doesn't doesn't look that great in this swab i i'm not a huge fan of the jfk ink i just think it's a little bit underwhelming for a for a, a special edition ink. And then here's one in Jihirban's Blue Ocean, which I think is a beautiful blue. I've heard a lot of people complain about this blue, uh, that it's just kind of boring, but I really dig it. It's got a little bit of sparkle to it too, not a ton. Uh, this, is the, this is the new version of it, I believe. Yeah, here it is in a medium shade for intensity. And actually what I did here was I just um, used a syringe to take ink off the top without shaking the bottle. And so you just get the blue, which is a fun party trick if you want to do that. Uh, just get the, the base color. You can do that with um, Rouge Hematite and all kinds of those. So there's a tip for you. Uh, and then here is Irishizuku Sukiyo. I'm not a huge fan of Irishizuku's as, uh, as I've said before. I think it's a little bit overrated, but um, here it is next to Sukiyo, which is the closest one I had from Irishizuku. I didn't find any others that were in this uh, this blue uh, color family, so or at least not this kind. So this is as close as I got, and this is actually kind of like trends toward aqua, uh, but it's got a bunch of interesting shading and uh, sheen going on, so you know that might be one worth checking out. All right, so this has been Sailor's Shikiyori Yonaga. Uh, I got this from Anderson Pens. Thanks again to Anderson Pens for sending this out. Uh, again, you can get this in samples or in bottles. Uh, the bottles are um, uh, 15 bucks for 20 mils. And then uh, the samples are probably like, I don't know, 250 or something like that for uh, three mils. So definitely... Definitely check this one out, I would say. Uh, it's one that I I wasn't really hyped on until I started using it. And now I'm pretty hyped on it, despite uh, the uh, the high cost, well, relatively high cost, and the, the, the mild misbehavior on 20 pounds. So there you go. Uh, that's it. Until next time, thank you to all my patrons. Uh, thank you to those of you who might become patrons at patreon.com slash inkdependence. And uh, I will see all y'all later. Peace out.